My Return to God. Jan Lund Nissen shares 2021 No Copyright Here Comes a Longer Testimony Year 2007 A Confession of Warning for You. Never play with the fire you want to burn. Do not play with sin. Much less with the thought of what might happen to it if you did. Dear reader, this is a living testimony of a life that was about to end in perdition if God had not heard and answered. The prayers of faith wept with tears. People have for years fought and prayed for the salvation of my soul and God got me. Maybe you're thinking, what does his life bring me to? Should he write everything in detail just to tell how Christian he is now? No. As you will see, I have nothing to praise myself for. All honor and praise is to Jesus. I want to be a warning to others. If someone, maybe you, could get all the way back to Jesus through this, then it's all worth it. You who have everything in order with Jesus and are in him, pray for this, must reach someone. Pray. Pray without ceasing for the lost souls who are on their way to perdition. Where would you have been if you had not prayed for you and helped you along the way? God bless you. Jan. To us peace came the punishment of Jesus the Son of God. I would like to be allowed to testify here. Although, I'm far from perfect, I know, I'm convinced I'm saved. Have passed from death to life in my God, with Jesus Christ, by the Holy Spirit who dwells within me. You must in no way sit and think. I.H. How is Jan a strong person? And what else can you think of good about people? Paul probably writes. He is the poorest of all. To that I would say. I am the very least of all. I have nothing to brag about. Other than the grace of God and his love in Jesus Christ. It is God through Jesus Christ. And no one else has led me here to where I stand now. My God belongs to the glory of all that he does. Give him your honor and praise. I grew up in among believers. I have attended meetings since childhood. As a 13-year-old, I decided to become a Christian. I was at the Pentecostal National Convention in Mariaga with my parents. There I went to the tent and bent my knees with a couple of brothers and got my name inscribed in the Book of Life. I just got so happy that I barely slept all night. The next day I went to intercession to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, and I then got the new language with which, among other things, talking secrets with God, i.e., the gift of heavy speech God gave me. Also that night I was so overjoyed that I could hardly sleep. As a 14-year-old, I was baptized into Christ by letting myself be buried in the grave of baptism. What is called adult baptism. Attended a Christian free school for the last three years of my schooling. Everything should be fine, right? I knew almost everything about how I should be as a Christian. Was raised in it and came to the meetings. So I was not a good Christian? But, there was something pulling in me. I often thought a lot about, what does the world have that I do not have? Just wait until I grow up. Then I go out to see what it is that the Christians call sin and darkness. I was constantly warned against looking like the world. The idea that I had to try a little of the world, otherwise I could not tell people what they could be free of, was there. I thought that all the old people, sitting there and warning about sin and its consequences, could not say what to do and not, they had not tried it themselves. They just sat there and yelled at someone, without themselves having a sense of what it was all about, most of them had no knowledge or understanding of the world at all. Yes. That's how the thoughts started to take root in my mind. Already there as a 13-year-old the devil began to sow weeds in my heart. Take care of your imagination. Be careful what you think and fantasize about in your thoughts. One fine day, your fantasies and thoughts will become a real life for you. 
I have personally experienced how thoughts come to life. Therefore, listen to what other Christians say and get every thought that does not belong to God into the word of Jesus. Do not dream of a world outside the ranks of Christians. You will simply die and perish. If you play with fire, you will burn yourself. The wages of sin will be your death. I do not want others to go into something similar and perhaps not have time to turn around at all. Jesus is coming soon, be ready to meet him now. I can only warn everyone I meet, including you. This is serious and not something you can just play with. Therefore, you get the text read, as they say, in the hope that you may reach heaven and not be lost. The years went by. I went nicely to the meetings, listened to the word. But, often my thoughts were completely different. I often sat and dreamed of freedom. So I could do whatever I wanted without people constantly having to control my life. You see, without me even knowing it, I was now beginning to rebel against the truth. I heard enough but it did not go in so to speak. I began to become immune to the word, thinking only of my freedom. Still, I would not hurt my parents and them. Other Christians. I hid my thoughts, became a hypocrite who probably sat in the meetings and listened and sang with both the choir and the youth choir, was involved in all things. I could not see that it was starting to go wrong in my life. Satan's false poison had begun to work. My eyes were going blind, saw and heard enough but. It did not really change anything regarding my life. Just because. I had begun to think about the world and what it might have to offer. I gave the world the little finger through the fantasies and desires of my thoughts, had to bitterly acknowledge that Satan via the world took the whole hand in the end. Be careful what you think. The thoughts go into the mind and settle there. It is whether it is good or evil thoughts. Your life becomes what you think and allows to take root in your mind. You automatically become what you put in your mouth. What you hear and think about you become a part of. The years passed, I continued to hypocrisy. Eventually turned 18 and was able to get away from home. Finally free to do what I want. Just the others now did not discover anything. But. I have to tell you. Many had long ago figured out what my inner life was like. Because the Holy Ghost had long ago told them it was wrong. No one can hide from God and the people who believe in Jesus. Not because there is anyone who wants to snag or rule over your life. No. They are set to pray for us if one is on the wrong path. And with the love of Jesus, rightly showing us and guiding one. Back to the narrow way of God, whether one will then listen to them and do accordingly. It's not about us just giving others the right it or they say it's rum. We are the word do. Even when others want to guide us, it is someone who has a little more experience than we have and these are the ones we must learn from. Afterwards I clearly see. Only now here afterwards can I see how Satan had distorted the thoughts of my mind so that I did not think of God but my own. Did. So to speak. The exact opposite of what I heard in the meetings and in Christian contexts. I could see that it was not quite according to the Bible everything I did. But I was not perfect either so I probably had to sin small in between. As long as it was not too rough then it probably went well. And you are not under any law. So who should forbid me to live my life? I was then not under the grace of God. It all started with a thought that was not from God. This thought set in revolt against Jesus and his path to eternal salvation. Without me discovering it, I became really defiant, a rebel against Jesus Christ and the truth. The worst was. I could not see. 
I was getting entangled in a giant web of lies, and the spider Satan sat and just waited for me to die completely of the poison. So that in the end I could not come back to Jesus at all. I went to the high school of Pentecostal revival, it was done as a young good Christian. There. I actually really started to spoon out. I slipped out in the evening. Down in town and on a drink, and then back to sleep the intoxication out so they could not see that I was tired. There I got to know some so-called friends like smoke hash. I started smoking it every now and then. It didn't smell of booze and then I found out I could better keep it going. And keep my nice Christian facade. I became quite good at playing comedy, well helped along the way by the Lord of Lies. I'm telling you, if you give Satan the little finger, by playing with sin in your mind, he takes the whole hand, and you only discover it when it has happened. Beware. Beware. If I did not have a bad conscience. I had a really bad conscience at first. But it turned out that I was more afraid that others would discover something. I did not think so much about whether Jesus was well with the things I did. I was saved forever. And had been a Christian since childhood. And the conscience died out just as quietly. Without me discovering what one might say my wrong choices suffocated the healthy and good conscience I had received from God. Satan is and will be the Lord of lies. Do not play with him. He eventually plays with you so you do not see or know what lies and truth are. Satan is so cunning that you do not even discover anything until you are more or less dead, spiritually speaking. You start to wonder why you are not so happy. You wonder. You just who are more or less outside the community with other Christians. Do you feel that way? Then you can begin to search your heart and see if you are still in the faith. Or whether you have become lukewarm in your first love for Jesus Christ. Do you feel I am judging you? Then it is the truth that you are going astray that hits and judges you. You should know. None. Neither I nor other Christians judge you as a human being. But. We love you too much for us to sit still. Can see that you are on your way to the fire of perdition. How do you think we would have been if no one had read the text to us? So to speak I still felt saved forever. I heard that God was gracious and did not count on sin. Once saved. Nothing could tear us out of God's court. N.D. When people asked how I was doing. Was my answer always with a smile on my lips? I feel good. The Christians could probably also see I was well on my way. On the way to what? You're right. I walked the path of broad perdition. With one leg in the grave. I did not see that I was now beginning to become blind, spiritually speaking. Witnessed about Jesus. Told about the love of God. Meant me well saved. I knew from the meetings that God would never condemn anyone. God is love. A gracious God who is always on the side of man. Surely he can not bear that any of the people should end up in the fire of perdition. As long as you live a somewhat pleasant life, seen with your own eyes, you will probably get to heaven. So shit then, you little ones sin a little. After all, no one is flawless. We must all be here. No one can live up to God. No one is better than others. You see. Now I had also begun to defend my evil and disgusting deeds, well helped along the way by Satan. Who is and will be a liar and a total destroyer who just exactly distorted the truth so much that it really looked like the whole thing. I should also first just learn to be a Christian not. You have to learn to crawl before you can walk. Seriously meant. It is seriously meant. When we get to know already in the books of Exodus. That Satan is like a serpent, cunning and cunning. We may not feel the snake bite. However, the effect is not absent. 
you will be poisoned. It is a slow-acting poison that quietly makes its impact, eventually letting you die. The way of sin is death. You will die and go to the perdition of hell if you are not completely on God's side. Whose page are you on? Who is your master? Yourself helped well on the way by the Lord of lies, or Jesus. As I said, I was a good Christian then. Thought I was in my good right to do what I wanted myself. You are not under any law, everything is allowed as a Christian. Even if not everything is beneficial, it can be just as much. Probably the body is destroyed by the wrong thing you put in it. But, we will get a new body someday. Should you die a little earlier than expected, you just go home to Jesus, right? Today I can see something completely different. I had become so used to, my life was as it was. You have the right to be the person you are now, don't you? That my conscience had begun to die. It was not something I myself as such noticed. Had a great mood, was always safe, slept well at night. Without thinking about the conscience. Of course I was good. I was at Satan's party, was not to him trouble, or a threat to him. Probably I was blessed at the meetings, the camps. And in other Christian contexts. I still spoke in tongues. So here Satan can also make a copy of true tongues so you think you speak God's tongue, and rejoiced in songs and choirs. Here it was my own carnal feelings, the most soulful, that got me in a good atmosphere. So did world music, I was deceived. But the word did not make its impact in me that much anymore. Today I can probably see. I was dying, spiritually speaking. A slow unnoticed death farce had begun. I began to avoid the most approachable Christians. Because, after all, they kept preaching to me. They always had to ask how I was doing, how annoying was it not. I got really mad at the approaching Christians. Today I know they did it because. The Holy Spirit in them compelled them to do so. They did it because. Jesus through them preached the truth to me, showing me the way of God and the truth of God instead of the way of lying. The worst thing was that someone kept giving me an ugly taste in my mouth. Not that they directly said anything about my life. Think. They called me their brother. Always said we pray for each other. Yes but I did not pray for them myself, could not because there was a difference between them and me. Today I know, they had long ago seen how it was. But in the love of Jesus. Without a word about my life, they kept showing me the love of Jesus. The love that eventually crushed me became me, too, fully part of it. Not by long moral sermons. But. By simply giving me a bad conscience that way. I often thought. Yes. They should just know. Well they can not see what I think and do. Surely no human being can see into the depths of the hearts of our minds. But God can show people. Here is something wrong and then God puts a need for that person, in the heart of the believer. Sometimes the believer is enlightened by the Holy Ghost in concrete terms about what is wrong and what needs to be done. Not to betray that person but to bring the person back into the love and life of Jesus. God never betrays anyone, he calls only in his love, to contemplation, in recognition of one's sin. Back to Calvary, where Jesus's blood once again cleanses from all injustice. God wants you to talk. God uses everything available just to get you talking. In particular, he uses other Christians who say things that hit you right in the heart. Precisely because God loves you and wants the best for you. So you might as well start looking for what. Other Christians say to you. However, do not let Satan deceive and deceive you from eternal life. 
I always lived on as before. When I got home, I forgot about it a bit again. Behold! Now the weeds of Satan have begun to stifle life. Satan's ryegrass slowly but surely suffocated all life. It got harder and harder for me to hide, behind the facade. I could well see the others had something I did not really have. Damn it too. I guess they were just a little further down the road than I was. I guess I also got there sometime as they were. I was also a sinner like everyone else. What I did, lived was probably no worse than the sins, faults and shortcomings of others. I was probably as good or evil as others. And we are right in God's eyes. Everyone sins then, and as a Christian you are then under God's grace. That's how I defended my life time and time again. Others probably do too. Stop your self-defense. It does not last, the day God judges what no human knows about you. I can well greet and say. It is not at all fun to be hit at one after another by the love of Jesus through other people. You get embarrassed. At the same time, you also get mad at yourself and those who love you in spite of. One really sees oneself as the sinner who is loved into the kingdom of God and then the war against the truth begins in earnest. And you get angry, ashamed. Instead, people come with a forefinger and start giving homemade moral sermons, just answer again to the best of their ability, and start beating themselves up with Bible verses. Just like so many other religious do. The love that flowed into my face every time I met the particular people was and is completely different from any other love. It was, is genuine, not learned. But, directly from God. Because the mind of Jesus was and still is in them. When one is in such a distorted situation as I was. You can very easily feel and see if the people really are as they stand and express themselves. Or whether it is just a theology or theory to be performed in front of others without sincere honest divine love life behind it. It is only a love that lasts. It is the crushing love of Jesus. The only thing I, at the time, had in my head all the time was to make sure no one discovered how bad it was. I wanted to spare my loved ones from being hurt by my life and the way I was in my everyday life. See now Satan had made me hide. I hid behind my homemade fig leaves for years. And yet I can see how God in his long suffering, with unspeakable patience, held his hand over me. Because he knew, I at some point would repent. But, he might as well have beaten my hand off and let me get lost. I will say again, God is not waiting for you. He's coming faster than lightning. It is not enough. We think we'm ready. Are we ready from the light of the Bible and are we still in and of the truth? Are you ready? I'm writing all this to you because I do not want anyone to do it the same way or live a life like this just the slightest bit and get to live in a life of lies and deception where in the end one does not know what is truth and lies. Now that I'm sitting here writing, I almost think it's a bit of a creepy story. Think. Had it just been that. Had it just been a tale an illustration of how wrong it can go. Dear reader, this is from real life. From a human life just like yours. At the same time, let it be a warning to you. About never compromising, with the truths of the Bible. It is not certain God is waiting to come. So you just have time to wake up and come to truth recognition. He does not hesitate to come just because you are not done with the world and yourself. Jesus is very soon told to come. Are you red and purified in the blood of Jesus? Time passed. I was reminded many times. I was on the wrong track. Among other things. I was run down by a drunk driver on my moped. Could have been killed on the spot. Then it came to me. Do you want to repent now? 
Yes, of course I would. It went well for several months, but alas, I still wanted the world. I slowly started to spoon out again, just not as much and as rough as I used to. Went to meetings, went to discos, went to widow's mill, widow's ball. Did what I wanted without being able to see. It would end in perdition. I had then repented when I was run down. Behaved then nicely enough among the Christians. No one so well how it was fat. I could also testify, say a few words from the Bible. What made it so that I was not so perfect? Just I did not hurt anyone, and they did not see it. Ack! The reality was quite different. Actually, I actually got further and further out in the dirt. Now I spent all my child savings and borrowed twice as much. Still went to meeting. In my free time, I smoked a fat hash every now and then. Drank and whore as it suited me. Violated all of God's commandments and a little more. I was really the servant of the Lord of Lies. But I thought I was still a Christian then. It was. Since others there were far worse than myself, I think. Now I too had been caught in the yarn of self-righteousness, thinking the others were worse than myself. As if excuses about others can save one. I was really deceived by the Lord of Lies himself. Do you see? I got the salary I deserved. I had always dreamed of just trying to sniff the world and its desires, so I knew a little about it too. I meant in deception that you then had to try a little of each before you could talk to about the life of sin and be understanding and compassionate to others who were out in the dung. I got that abundance to feel and taste. I have to ask you again: Who is hiding you? Do you really dare to take that risk and do something near the same? I tell you, in love, God in no way allows Himself to be mocked. Those who sit in the company of mockers, drinkers, gluttons, whores, for that matter, hypocrites, will not enter the kingdom of God at all. Only those cleansed in the blood of Jesus will come in and inherit eternal life. No, I'm not preaching to you. I only want to show you how a human being can come out in lies and deception. Out there, where there is only one road, and that is towards perdition. I'm telling you, it really is the forecourt of yes, yes, hell. To have to be a so-called Christian and then still go hide. Always be careful to do and say the right things in Christian contexts. If you have not had stress and bad nerves before, you will get it now. If you are in a similar situation, Satan is and will be a destroyer, and he destroys whoever he can. So he is as real as both God and Jesus are. I will say to you again: Beware! Watch out for. Are you sure you live close to God? Are you in Jesus Christ? Again and again, God spoke to me. Among other things, God spoke strongly to me as I drove into the ditch with the car. It was totally crumpled up. There, I could easily have been killed on the spot and ended up in hell's perdition. Yes, Lord, now I want to stop my city trips and extravagant lives. Now I should probably pull myself together and be a proper Christian, as if you could just take yourself by the neck and live as a Christian should do. That is what the religious, the hypocrites, and the scribes did in Jesus's day, even today. Now my old life is over. It went pretty well for a while, but my heart, mind had not surrendered completely to the will of God. I still would not go on the crossroads, the narrow way to heaven, the path where everything in oneself dies and one no longer decides for oneself, one's path. Probably I could see that I should, but just could not and would not. You see, 
Satan had bound me and paralyzed me so I could not go to the cross. My will had the thief Satan also stolen from me. I was hugely lonely. Started walking out a bit again. Because. I missed friends. Probably I met nice people at the meetings. But it was as if I still did not quite have as close a friendship and fellowship with them as I should have. You can not have fellowship with both the world and its desires and at the same time have a close fellowship with Christians who are filled with the Holy Spirit, so you have a foreign spirit with you. If you live with one leg in the world and the other in the church. I have to tell you. It's not even something the Christians decide, that's just God's natural law. Satan is an expert in making people passive so that they cannot go to Jesus, as they basically can well see should. Here it is important that other Christians see it and carry those who can not even go to Jesus. Carries people like a shepherd carries on a torn lamb, home in the fold of sheep. There was and still is, someone who carried me to Jesus, and laid me in his hand, therefore I am in Jesus is saved and free today. Remember, dear fellow Christian brother and sister, you must carry those who can not walk by themselves. Today, today I can see. It was the darkness of sin in my life that separated me from the fellowship of Jesus Christ. What fellowship can darkness and light have? Nothing absolutely nothing. One cannot serve two masters at the same time, one will choose to love one and hate the other. Who do you love as your Lord? Who have you chosen to serve? I was close to ending up in the wrong place due to my wrong choice. Remember my crippled life, that time, started with my thoughts, this is how it goes for you too. If you are not on guard now, from our thoughts it goes down into the mind and makes its impact there so that what we think becomes a part of ourselves. You become what you eat. Remember it. Now I do not know if you somehow feel outside the Christian community. So just try to think about. Are you on the narrow road yet? Are you in the light? Or is there something that stands in the way of God's love in your life? It really does not have to be something similar to what I have done. But, think right after. Does your life conform to the truth? And what do you say others should do? Do you live the life you preach? You too can easily be trapped in the life of your own religiosity self-improvement. I was now trying to buy myself into friends and a little attention. Gave many laps in various places and was surrounded by. Life and the so-called happy friends. But, the money disappeared and so did my friends. Now I was so far out that people in the church, congregation started asking how my life was and was connected. The rumors began to get to their ears. When people talked to others from there. Did they ask? Yes. But we know him Jan. He does such and such. Think. Even people in the world could see there was something that was not quite right. The world looks very closely at your life too. They ask if what you are really doing has anything to do with Jesus. They see you and your life. Pay attention to it. I can greet and say one is revealed, if not in one way then in the other. Therefore, be honest, do not save the truth about your life. Come to light with it. Especially when Christians ask you, do not lie but tell the truth as you are and have it. When the Christians asked, I always denied everything. Come up with a lot of explanations that all the others were completely wrong on it. How I got tired of always having to, just like standing school right for all my actions. And that I should always be prepared for the various questions. I could never be just the way I am. Always had to be taken care of so I didn't fall outside the box. I could not see. There were people who were sincerely concerned about my life 
and actually just wanted me to make amends with God. Now Satan formed me. They were a bunch of spies, like they were better than me. What do they imagine coming running in time and out of time to spy on me? I became cold and harsh towards the wrong ones. I slapped the hand of those who just wanted to take me lovingly in the hand. The friends I made in the world were thankfully not like that. They did not interfere. Precisely because I was in the same boat as them. Time passed, I became seriously ill. Got a viral infection where the whole immune system smoked down. Was also near death there. But, there was someone who prayed for me and I got well again. Yes. Now I should probably pull myself together and not sin so grossly anymore. Now it seemed serious. Now I must have soon spent all my nine lives, so to speak. Everything lasted only a short time. Then I forgot all about the word of the Lord. I was fine, wasn't I? No. Someone who is on the verge of death is not feeling well. You can dream if you are feeling well. Imagine for a second you were transposed into the karmic driven world of Earl. No. But the bill is coming. The judgment is completed. And there is no mercy or mercy for him who will not repent completely. Man, sits on a path of death, without even knowing it. A time where the end at a time ends with death and perdition in eternal separation from eternal life. I moved from the city for a short period of time. I did not want to live in the place where I lived anymore, in a small room with an elder and their grandson also lived in the house. Above me also lived a Christian. No I wanted away from the spies. Now I pictured myself in it was because. I wanted to help the person I moved house with. I wanted him to attend meetings and he was to be saved. But. No. He was not saved. Even though he attended some meetings. Today. I do not even know if he is still alive. I ask. Can a blind person guide a blind person? No. I moved back to the city. Got me a small room. Now you would think. I had gradually learned my lesson. Oh no. Now I knew the technique. As long as I did not hurt other Christians. As long as I smiled and showed I was happy. Everything went well. God is gracious and Jesus has forgiven me everything. So I started going to inns again. I then stopped with discos and balls. The hash was also put on the shelf. A few objects could not hurt. And then there was such good music and fun to dance. Other Christians do that too. So that was all right, right? The main thing was that I had not become an addict and could easily just let go if that was what I wanted. I had the choice of my free will. It could not go completely wrong. Did it do so much? Yes it did. What about this word? Do you not fit in with this world? Wasn't that what I did? Maybe you are also doing something in that direction? Yes. Well, of course, I still came to the meetings. You do not do that as a good Christian, raised your hands at meetings, was very blessed by them. Yes. You wonder about all that. How could it be that I still felt so good in meetings, in the camps? And when I was with other Christians? I'll tell you that. Satan stayed home when I was to be with other Christians. He walked out of me the time I was in the meetings waiting for me when I got home. He waited to re-enter his house. He imitated, copied, the spiritual life quite nicely distorted the truth so that I finally believed the life I myself had was perfect. Jesus says a lot about freedom. Doesn't he? But just not the freedom of such a life. But there against freedom from himself and his own life. It was to everyone else who was spoken to. I was happy and positive all the time. Was never afraid to go for. Lost.
I didn't have to be either. I was overcome, so to speak, by the Lord of Perdition. Sitting on the deathbed of Perdition, waiting for the kingdom I belonged to to come nearer. Namely, eternal separation and eternal perdition in the lake of fire, along with the devil and all his ministering spirits and angels. I was so deep inside a cobweb of lies that I thought the lie was truth. So not that the prince of darkness had disguised himself as an angel of lust for me. Satan is like a wolf disguised in sheepskin. Everything can look so real and good. But, in reality, everything is just like a mirage, like a mist, a mist that quickly disappears again. Now I had become a little more proper. Had stopped smoking cannabis, had stopped going to the ball, at discos. Did not hear so much anymore, it could slip in once in a while, but shit, everyone is in the same boat, no one is flawless. I only drank a little once in a while, not every day. Just like that on festive occasions. I also told my circle of friends that I was a Christian and believed in Jesus. Got a lot of discussions about Christianity and the Bible. So I testified well enough about Jesus. As you should, as a Christian. Wasn't that a good example? No. I had gradually become well allied, without even being able to see or feel it, with Satan. Without actually having any idea, I lived with him, let him use, and abuse the temple, me as he wanted was, so to speak, more or less one in the spirit of Satan and his lies. He made me believe I was free. Free to live as I wanted. I had heard that we as Christians are completely free because Jesus has given us the right to freedom, but not the freedom I lived in. That was the deception of the lie. You are no longer saved by abstaining from certain kinds of food. Yeah Al that sounds pretty crap to me. Looks like Al that sounds crap to me. Looks like Al that sounds crap to me. Looks like Al that sounds crap to me. This is still not a life story. It's a warning to you who play with fire. You will burn yourself if you do not turn to the truth instead of the lie of deception. Time and time again I heard of others who had turned completely from their evil ways. But. I had become both blind and deaf. I could see that everything was not so smart even, but shit, no one is perfect. I'll warn you again. Look in your life. If you are going astray, however. Heed this warning. Won't you just stop on your way and search your own life? I also got rid of my loneliness. I moved in with someone who was not a Christian either. It was almost a kind of collective. They were, as they say, very liberal. There in the house people could come and go as they pleased. Today I would almost call it a house in Sodom and Gomorrah. There was partying, toasting in wine from morning to evening, people came and went as if at a train station. Everyone could do what they wanted there. The wife who had once had something to do with Christianity, she had a Bible and we often talked about it. So, I pictured myself. Now I was probably a kind of house missionary. They also had two children, whom I often cared for and took care of. You do not have to take care of the little ones. Just look how Satan had entangled me in lies. Now I thought I was a house missionary. Yes, and I was also merciful. I looked after the children and helped with the house. In any case, I did not just walk past my neighbor but then took care of them, by bending all the way down to them and going in on their terms. I must have gotten into a service that they had said you wanted to get into. Now I was feeling really good, I thought. When the Christians asked how it went, I could tell about my so-called service. About how much good I did to the poor people. Of course in the hope that they would become Christians. See now Satan had also made me imagine that I was in service. But for whom? Yes. 
for the Lord of Lies. I had become a servant to Satan. And I was happily deceived, and used by him. Now I felt free and well. No one could really figure out my life anymore. It might sound like it was a lot right in what I said and did. You have to reach out to everyone, do good to everyone, be a witness in all your activities. Yeah Al that sounds pretty crap to me. Looks like BT ain't for me either. On the way to the eternal fire of perdition. I want to say. Words do not save our so-called self-made good deeds do not save anyone either. You are just as lost no matter what you yourself think and believe, if you do not really turn from your own evil way of life and follow Jesus by faith, and stop all your sins. We are not to live his life as Christians. I did not see that when you are friends with the world, you become an enemy of God. Such is the law of God. Either one is with God or against. You can not go a middle way. There is no middle ground. You deceive yourself and others if you believe otherwise. One is and will be a deceiver if one is on other paths than God. Knowing that this is the wrong path. I also did not see how I was quietly crashing. T in every way. Especially in the inner life it went downhill. Now everything about meetings and Christian contexts had become something. I did routinely. So more for the sake of good order and not to hurt the other Christians I went to the meetings and to be sure I came to heaven. As if it were to count whether one had now also been so and so many times in the church or not. Only the pure in heart must see God. From the heart, mind come evil or good thoughts that make us do what we do. I'm telling you, only faith in Jesus and purification in his blood will save you. You will not be saved and exempted from perdition because you now go to church or do so and so many good things and deeds. You are saved by the grace of God, by faith in Jesus Christ. I lived on. And in my emotions. I think I got very into Hopler and good mood when there was music in the meetings and the songs were just so good. I really think I was blessed. As if the blessing should lie in one's feelings. I rocked along to the tunes and swam all the way away in the good mood. I did not see then. That it was the same moods that the world lives in and on. I had now started to live in. It could never go completely wrong when it was Christian lyrics and melodies I sang along to, right? Yes it could. I probably heard and sang the words but I quickly forgot them. They didn't really go into my mind anymore and worked there. But the tunes I could live on for weeks. If you look now. The heart, mind had begun to faint from the snake venom. Now the words didn't work that much anymore. When I occasionally thought that it was probably not quite right with me. I hit it off. I'm not worse than others. So what? We have all sinned and lack the glory of God. After all, no one is perfect, we all have our small flaws and shortcomings. I can not do that because there are some who do not know how to be free and they are so bound by laws and rules. I did not see now I had also begun to condemn the Christians. I had become as our brother's accusers are. I started to turn everything against the others. In any case, it was not me that was wrong. Today I can see. My self-righteousness flourished like never before. Here you must also just look at yourself. Are you self-righteous or justified by the grace of God, by faith in Jesus? I did not see the law, rules they presented to me was the law of the love of Jesus Christ, which gives freedom. No. Freedom to sin and shoot past the will of God to measure with one. And live his own life. But to live a whole new life, where one is free from one's own life and sin. I had become a slave to evil. That the law of sin and death, instead of of the good.
the law of the grace of God. You can say, I lived and was under the curse of the wrath of God. Instead of staying, in the love of the Son of God. I had turned away from the love of true and perfect grace. Is something hitting you? Something inside you that just says, help. I actually feel the exact same way, to be honest. Whether it is a little or a lot, it is subordinate. Sin is sin. Infidelity to the truths of the Son of God is and will be infidelity. So hurry up. Hurry up. It's urgent for you. Bend your knees at the cross. Bow to the finished work of Jesus at Calvary. Pour out all your heart to the Lord your God. Enter the kingdom of God's beloved Son. Come under the love of God in Jesus Christ. You only get it by acknowledging that you are a sinner and need God's salvation again. Whether or not you have had the name Christian for maybe 40 years. You must humble yourself, or God will humble you on his day. You must confess to God that it is you who is lost, and not the fault of your circumstances or others. And it must be completely without wraps. God does not accept it whether you now begin to defend your actions or yourself. You can in no way begin to apologize to yourself by saying. It is due to my possibly. Illness. It's my destiny's fault, etc. What else can you find yourself apologizing for? You have lost. You have nothing but yourself to bring to God. Do you then at all mean anything with your repentance and wholeheartedly will turn away from your evil way and your empty dead life? Just by stopping doing what you know very well is evil in the eyes of God. If God is faithful and just to you, then God will gladly forgive all your sins and transgressions. And he will let the blood of the Son of Jesus Christ purify you completely in your conscience. I can testify that is true. If you just wanted to get to the cross of Jesus, why would you stay in your hypocrisy and deception? However, do not stay in it anymore. Now get out of your shell, out and into the truth of Jesus. Come out into the light of truth. Jesus loves you and is waiting for you. Should he still wait in vain? Your time is running out fast. God can breathe the light of your life as easily as nothing. That's why I ask you again and again. Are you completely with, or are you outside the kingdom of God and his righteousness? Do not let it go that way for you. That you eventually become so. Poisoned that there is no hope and way back to God for you. Come to Jesus now, though. It is now and not tomorrow you must come to him and make a living. Tomorrow it is not certain you have the opportunity to be completely free and redeemed, saved, by the grace of God. Yes, it's yourself who must come. No one can throw you into Jesus' arms. If only we could you would not be sitting like now. The choice is entirely your own, as you are probably aware, then you are completely free. As the free man you are. You choose eternal life or eternal perdition. You have to choose what you want. I and others can only ask you to accept the invitation, to your eternal life. If you do not want to, we must see with tears, that you are lost. Now I'm not going to preach to you. I will now continue to tell you about how my disobedience dragged me further and further out. Then you can judge for yourself whether you also want to go on such a slippery slope where it ultimately ends with eternal separation from God and eternal place in the lake of fire that burns without ceasing. You choose. My life went on. I found a buddy who was also alone. We agreed to rent an apartment together. Then none of us would be lonely anymore. Unfortunately, he was not a Christian. But, what was to happen to that? 
It probably didn't matter that much if you could share an apartment, that's what so many people do. If only you were a Christian, and you should probably have a roof over your head. You see, I had also forgotten all about not having to draw unequal yokes with this world as a Christian. And that the children of the world are the children of darkness. That light and darkness again communion can have with each other. Just try to see where I forgot all about the teachings of God the Lord. Heard and heard without hearing anything at all. I just want to mention here. He received Jesus half an hour before he became unconscious and died in 2007, after a long and difficult illness. Had I not repented in 2005, it would not have happened. And I would have had to account for the loss of a soul because I disobeyed God's call to repentance. So serious is it dear reader. You must turn around, said in love, otherwise you will be lost. God sees right through you and your half-truths. I now began to try to help others. Among other things. A drug addict who then beat me down. I thought I could win him for Jesus and help him free. I was free from my hashish addiction and then I could help others free. But. I was like a blind man trying to guide a blind man. I did not get him converted. I do not know if he is a Christian today. I had become a religious eye servant. People should see I was with. How about you? Are you hiding behind imaginary self-made, religious eye services? I got started serving. Went out as a waiter at various pubs and in that way helped to lead people into depravity. I could not see it wrong to serve beer, spirits, to others. You have to be where the people are and try not to win them. Now they could see that Christians were not so much different than they themselves are. As long as you are a Christian. Everything goes well. I could both bowls party with them. Today I can see. I was sitting in the team of mockers. Read for yourself. Psalm.1 that despite the fact that time and time again I had heard that gluttons and drunkards do not enter the kingdom of God at all. I also knew very well. That word about. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the way of the ungodly, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful, but desireth the law of the Lord, which dwelleth in that day and night. But. It probably only applied to the old Christians who were just so old-fashioned that they had not kept up with the times at all. I continued to serve but now only for companies etc. One day the back would no longer. And I had to stop it. Today, I think it was God my Father who would tell me to stop serving people that way. I still could not see. I was strong on my way down the hill, down towards the perdition. My whole life, after all, went its doom in meeting. Maybe I could do so that my back would no longer. It's just a whole ordinary Danish folk disease. No. Of course, no one can do for when the body can no longer. And I was not the strong psychic man either. Was it just my fault? No. Maybe not at all and it was my own fault that I had now also started to get mentally ill, with depressive thoughts. I had made the wrong choice in my life, and even though I knew it would end badly. But. One thing I could do something about. It was that my inner man was dying out completely. Now my conscience did not speak so much to me either. I could always defend my actions and myself. With a lot of words torn out of the Bible intermittently, whether the Christians came too close. I thought everyone has theirs to mess with. I thought I was saved and well on my way to heaven. So no one should interfere in my life anymore. What do you apologize for? It ended then. I got to work at a social cafe. Fine. Then I had a chance to do good to the weak in society. So not my own weakness anymore. E. 
may be witness for someone and bring them to meetings. See now it was not so important any more if they came to faith. Now it was a matter of bringing someone to meetings. Today I can see. I did it just so that the Christians would not see how depraved I really was. And for God to see the activity of my Christianity. I wanted to do good deeds so that they would see that I was completely in a service. Not one came along. Could they? When did my life actually show something other than what I said? No. Our lives always shout much louder than our words. I tried to get an education in iron and metal but had to give up and retire. It was there in 1997. My back didn't want any more and my nerves weren't too good either. I have to tell you. I am what is commonly called a victim of bullying. All my life I've been the black sheep. Ever since my school days, I have always been bullied and been the little one. It resulted in me getting so scared. That when people shouted loudly for me in a workplace, I went in black. Stayed home the next day and reported me sick. That's why I retired. I would say that. I have been completely healed by the wounds of Jesus. Today, I am completely free of inferiority complexes. Not with the help of any psychologists, but by virtue of Jesus. Jesus certainly does not do anything half, he gives complete healing also for all the inner wounds one can have. I have experienced this myself and others as well. If you yourself are in the situation that you have wounds inside you that will not heal and hurt, then come to Jesus with it exactly as it is. Without trying to hide it from him and you will be free from it too. The one who gets Jesus liberated really becomes a free human being, I must tell you. So I had stopped the big city trips. Now I only went to the tribal inn once in a while and I mostly drank cola or just a single little one. So, I had improved a little then. I had really managed to adorn old Adam. Who I would otherwise have buried in baptism. See baptismal instruction if you do not know what baptism is. I was no longer completely wrong. Quietly and calmly, had I entered the right path? Today. I would rather call it a futile attempt to embellish myself. Just like laying out a veil of smoke. So people could now see. I was a real Christian and I had my case in order with God. What about you? Are you also trying to put a smokescreen over your life? Today I can see something completely different. Satan, whose name is also Lucifer, knows everything about the Bible and God. He himself has been in heaven. He knows God better than we do. And is an expert in making us believe the lie and everything is fine. Satan often uses the Bible to lead us astray. He can easily make it look like it's the truth, even if it's a lie. That is why I want to warn you. Beware Satan is a liar and a deceiver. He can quickly deceive you if you do not keep the word of God and listen carefully to what other Christians say to you. They do not say it just because you have a bad conscience or to be on your neck. They actually love you too much to see that you might be going astray, away from the truth. However, listen to your siblings in the Lord Jesus and do what the Bible says. Do not let Satan deceive you. Now you are warned. Do not let it go as long as I did. It may be too late. You do not know when you might. Gets a cardiac arrest or otherwise dies. Do not be late your time is running out fast. Today. Right now. The rest of your life begins. Where are you going? To the fire of perdition. Or to heaven. Too late. Too late. You may be late for life. Now I had gradually gotten myself a really good life. A life where it was not the big problems and struggles. It's clear then. Of course. Satan keeps quiet. Towards people like him already he got over on his side. They are not in danger of his kingdom. 
It's much worse with those ardent Christians. They are dangerous because they tear the prey from the enemy, and are Satan's rivals. It went well enough. This year, 2004, I got rubbish with my shoulder. Went to intercession and was healed. It was about the outer joint had to be replaced. I got in late 2004, a severe inflammatory attack in my right arm. Where fluid and inflammation drifted down over it. It was so painful that I was about to lose consciousness one day. I saw both neon colors and sun and moon. But. I did not fear death. I thought everything was fine, between God and me. The penicillin did not work properly. The doctor said. I should be admitted. A nurse said I could lose my arm. That too I was healed of, by the laying on of hands. I can truly say. God let it rain on both the righteous and the unrighteous. For my part, goodness and faithfulness in all things in spite of my iniquity against the truth, his son Jesus Christ. I know in any case it's true. Everything we do against Jesus Christ is forgiven us when we come to God at the cross and let G. out purify us in the blood of his son. Then we come to years. 2005. There I got, in the month of January, a very severe depression. I went all the way down and most wanted to take my life. No hope and light was left for me. I had to start on nerve pills and conversations with doctors and have sedatives. I went to intercession and came out of the darkness as far as I remember in the month of March. But the depression was still there, only the thoughts of suicide had disappeared. Only in 2017 was I totally healed from the depression and set free by the Lord Jesus. So there should be nothing more wrong. God blessed me. I could see for myself. From my own experience that he healed me. But. Something was still wrong. I was not really free and redeemed. Inside. There was chaos of confusion and frustrations. Why did I not feel like the other Christians anyway? I realized. Suddenly it dawned on me. It was God who wanted to give me his real life back that way. The darkness that was over. And in my life. It was the darkness of sin that had taken over my life and had penetrated completely into my mind. Had now to experience for myself that the judgment I judged other Christians with. I myself was struck by with full force. Was under a hell of accusations about everything I should have done a long time ago and where I did hate myself though. Why would I not in time have recognized I was out in sin and repented? Why? Why and how could it go so wrong without me having a clue how wrong it was? I would not when there was time for repentance. I chose not to listen to siblings in the Lord Jesus. After all, it was they who had the wrong perception of things, not me. I had become arrogant and proud in my own thoughts. Thought I was wiser than the word of the Bible and the loving admonitions of God. My rebellious pride became my downfall. However, for repentance. And faith in Jesus as he is and not as the Lord Lucifer makes him. My renewal I fiddled around, in more or less darkness until April 14, 2005. There I lay on my knees, crying out to God for new mercy. Repenting of all my murky past. I was done apologizing for both. There the love of God totally crushed me. I now saw my whole self-appointed, in my own opinion pious and good Christian life. I cried and grad in the face of God. At that moment, I certainly did not feel like someone was born again. I was like the prodigal son seeking back to the father house. Then I just looked at one. With my own eyes. God's grace is of grace be stretched out over me. I saw a white, light arm reach out to me with a stick in my hand, grace scepter, 
on which sat a diamond-like stone. After which a voice said, I will give you my grace again. First there on that date. Can I say my Christian life began in earnest? For my part, will. The 14th of April 2005 always stand as my beginning of the walk in the light of the narrow road. That day, I put the world behind me. And came as a prodigal son home to God my father's house. That much was needed before I came to the realization of the truth that sets free. I see today. Much could have been different. Many things I could have avoided. Many wounds I could have avoided. If only I had repented and listened in time. By doing as my siblings in the Lord spoke to me. Practice. Today. I resent all the wasted time that has passed. Think for over 20 years. I let myself be more or less deceived. Like Paul, I am ashamed of the things I did at the time. But I know too, that for me there is no accusation, or condemnation anymore. Rom.8. He with, because, Jesus Christ has the great unfathomable grace of God. Set me free from the law of sin and death. Hooray! Today I live my life because Jesus lives. I am free. Redeemed. Not with all the world's self-improvement. But by virtue of the grace God the Lord has shown. Think I must also call myself a child of God. And I am. All by grace. By faith in Jesus Christ the Son of God. As dead. My sins were taken up on the cross, resurrected on the third day. And now he is sitting at the right hand of my Father. Where Jesus always intercedes for us who are his. I'm a whole new creature. Sure. One can say, my exterior, the body, etc. is not what it has been. Life leaves its traces in the body. But. I am born again. The slavery of the old life is over. Everything has become new. Not that I now think I'm perfect. I only know that I am completely saved by the grace of God. And it is grace over grace to be saved. God's grace has also become me enough. God was gracious to me. Still, when I sit here and look back on a life that was about to be lost. I see. God through all. In spite of my faults and sins has held his hand over me. I see today. That I have been hidden in Jesus all along. And he just waited and waited for me to come. But it could very. Very easily have been too late. I do not share this because. I want to give you some kind of assurance that God will be just as gracious to you. You really have to take Jesus' call to you seriously. Your day can be. Repassing before you have time to read my testimony to the end. It was at the last minute that I came home to the father house. Think about it. I could, for example, easily have committed suicide in my then darkness. I am not sure God would stay on for quite some time, calling and drawing me to himself. But. Hallelujah. God saw the cry of my innermost heart and took me into himself when I finally, long after, realized. With God. In Jesus Christ is life. The truth. Eternal life. I also just want to mention. Without the faithful intercession of my parents and others, I would never have become a child of God. A true child of God. There is nothing I imagine, like a kind of dream or fantasy. And much less a kind of role-playing game where you just play along with the rules the game in the church has and then otherwise play your own rules game when no one else sees it. The prayers of faith for my soul have been prayed for years. Even though people did not see any progress, they prayed. There have been weeping in buckets of tears over the decay of my soul. There were some who, just as Moses did for Israel, constantly raised their hands of faith. Constantly they prayed for the salvation of my soul. 
they thus stood in the gap between the wrath of God and me. And quite a few of them are already among those who have gone before home before me, also they are waiting for me there at home. Had they not done so, even though they did not immediately see a result, I would have been lost a long time ago. Thank you in the name of Jesus to all of you who are in the service of prayer. There were and still are some who stand in the gap before the face of God. Someone who fully and completely sacrifices their whole life for others. Puts everything. Because if it was then possible that just one person would surrender completely. To fight in prayer. To pray for another human being into the kingdom of God. Is to put one's life on the line for another human being. Greater love has no one but the one who puts his life on for others. All glory and thanks to Jesus, for our advocates in him. You who have someone you pray for, keep going. God hears prayers and answers them. I am one of the many prayer children, which, so to speak, is bred by prayer. A child of prayer. Hang on. There were some who were faithful and persevering. It was in spite of what they saw with their physical eyes, it was in spite of what they heard with their physical ears. Despite the fact that apparently no significant result could be seen. Were they still obedient to the voice of the Holy Spirit? And remained faithful in their prayer service. There was someone watching me, with the eyes of God, guided there by the Holy Spirit. Without a single time that they accused me of anything. Only love. The love of Jesus. I met every time I was with those people. And in the end, I could not resist it anymore. I saw. I actually lived the opposite of what they showed in their lives. Those who are back and have not gone before are still the same people today. Only love I never hear or see any accusation or condemnation from them. None of them sniff in my past by asking questions. They themselves are like me, hidden and hidden in Jesus, and have even forgotten their sins because they have been cleansed away by Jesus. They have been in Jesus all the time. And it's good to be there. Today I can see how much of a burden those people have been carrying for years. And they still do. In endurance they bear one another's burdens. Let us learn from them. And help carry each other's burden. When we see something that is going wrong, for others. And we can not get them convinced, or quite led. Then we must carry them night and day in prayer. Before the throne of God's grace, in the mind of the love of Jesus Christ. Then God's result will not fail. As it says, He that soweth in tears shall reap in joy. When they come home carrying on their neg. The neg a bean results. Prayer souls. Pray into the kingdom of God. Into our chambers. Where no one sees us. But where the Lord rewards perseverance in prayer. Where do you think I would have been if I had not been kept in prayer? Many have gone before. Home to Jesus. They prayed for years for my soul. But did not see the result. But they must get their joyful reward when we meet there at home. The prayer of faith fully manages to save the sick. I was sick of sin. But the Lord God answered the prayers of the brethren of my faith. And saved me. Pulled me up from the deepest mud and set my foot on the rock Jesus Christ. And there in him on the ground of the word it is good to be. You might shudder after seeing all this. Think. You're kidding. How naive can a human being then be? Jan. Who knew better? He grew up with believing parents, has always attended meetings, right from childhood. No. He seems to be exaggerating a bit abundantly. No. I'm not exaggerating. That's how I tell you. Does Jan need to brush up on most of his life like this? He could have just told it and that day he came back to Jesus and now he is saved. Yes. I could just skip where the fence is lowest. Say what comes my life others know. 
It's not fun, and exciting. How to write so much. You feel almost made public tea. Il Skoué. With his whole life. I have to tell you. I have not even asked for it to be written that much. It just comes to me as I write. Then you just have to be obedient and do it. Not because. You must have pity on me and think it's such a shame for me. That in itself is not because either. These are the very misdeeds you must notice. It is the result. Fruits of not being obedient and responsive that I want people to take note of. It is both a testimony, of God's salvation, and a very powerful warning. To one or more who are well on their way to perdition. In their self-deception and lies, they have become blind. Do not see they are going astray. Satan has closed the eyes of many. Many need to have their eyes reopened. So they do not live in a dream world where everything seems to be in perfect order. I hope and pray for. That this must be the eye drops of someone who can open the eyes of a blind man, quickened by the Holy Spirit, so that more may return to the truth and the real life of Jesus Christ. And no longer wander and live as enemies of the cross of Jesus Christ and the gospel which is the power of God for full salvation. I know, there are many pages around that are hiding. They do not want to know that it is they who are on the wrong path. There are others who have it the way I had it and make the exact same mistake. Hiding for doomsday behind their fake fig leaves of facades. They can not see. They are lost. Their eyes are closed. Their ears are deaf. They manage, so to speak. Not to find their way back to God's narrow crossroads. Therefore, it becomes this way. Can a single human enter the narrow path? Or being warned in time, via what the person is reading here. Then it's all worth it. My intention is only to honor Jesus through this, and point to him. Whereby you can have full salvation, redemption and the forgiveness of sins. You have not been given another name by which you can be saved. Then in Jesus Christ the Son of God. Why do you want to die? You will not find any kind of happiness, peace, joy. Faith and hope outside of Jesus Christ. You die if you are not fully surrendered to Jesus Christ and are in the light with your whole life. I can not help but tell you how it goes. Based on my own experiences, whether one is not completely with Jesus. I sincerely hope you too will stop limping in both directions. Become a whole person. Come to Jesus, though. He loves you and is waiting for you to come. Repent now. Tomorrow you may be dead. It is now your time for full surrender to repentance in faith in Jesus. However, do not be a fool like I was. Only a fool does not care about the salvation of the soul. Only you who are foolish do not fear the deceptive waves of the world sea, which eventually draw you to the lake of perdition. To your eternal torment. To you who are in Jesus Christ. Will I ask you to help pray that this, like so many other Christians things, must help to speak so much to one or more that they may have a clean table with God the Lord before it is too late. Just think, it could be you who was not in the Lord's way, but had been deceived. It is very important to me that we must reach those who walk with both legs in each camp. Pray. Pray in faith without ceasing for your fellow men. Think it could be you. Supplement written 2021 Now comes the witness also about how God healed me for total depression. In 2017 I had a really hard time, when the depression was about to kill me. The medicine did not really help, many prayed for me. I sat one evening and night at the kitchen table just wanted to die. Sat with a knife in hand, wanted to cut myself to pieces just die. 
since there is a young man from Africa that I had gotten in touch with via FB who called me. What could he do? No thing. He was sitting in another country, but God wanted it that way. Usually their internet does not work very well but that night and bat it worked all the time. He sat and prayed, had my Bible words, talked to me. Degree with me all night, Jesus by the Holy Spirit in him. I promised him so not to take my life right now, but the suicidal thoughts were there all the time 24 hours a day. The next day at 12.20 noon I was standing in a chair. Now I could no longer. I had made everything clear. The rope in the ceiling and around my neck. But equal when I was about to jump calling he over messenger. He almost shouted what are you doing show me scene. I did not say anything. He said you stand like this and like that. Well then I had to tell and show him that. He prayed and in that moment I was free and totally healed. I was given some medicine as the doctor said I should probably have the rest of my life. What I am saying now I will in no way recommend anyone on medicine to do. Always talk to your doctor before doing anything. But it came very strongly to me. Stop taking the medicine now. I did so in faith and have not felt any side effects or depression since that day. God healed my totally through Jesus his son Amen thank Jesus. Do not come and say that God does not work miracles. Is today. A shape process begins when you are born again. My transformation process began when I was 13 years old. I tell you this so that you see concretely that you are in a process with God by the Holy Spirit within you. These are all true Christians, so therefore, do not judge your siblings. For the things you think are completely wrong in their lives, help them, support them, guide them, pray with them. These are your siblings. What looks like nothing. As if people are not Christians, a mustard seed grows up inside people and becomes a tree the birds of the sky can build nests in. Remember that. God has transformed my life from within. It happens by we cooperate with God through Jesus throughout life, bowing to the word of God, to what God by the Holy Spirit also tells us through other siblings. By the Holy Spirit in our true siblings in the Lord Jesus, especially the slightly older ones. In the faith has a lot to give us. They also have a life experience that you who are younger need so you do not fall into the same things or something similar. If you are not a member of a community, church or congregation. You will just as quietly die, spiritually speaking. You need others and they need you. A true church, community is family life together not alone, you can read about it in the Bible. We have all gained abilities, talents but not only for our own lives and consumption but for the common benefit of others as well. We have the various gifts of grace that only work together on the body of Jesus in a local church community. Never judge a true Christian but judge and the person has the Holy Spirit in him. You will feel it quickly. The light and darkness cannot be together in the long run. The darkness person will automatically walk or start gossiping about you. Destroy. Steal and lie behind your back to eventually run away automatically. If the person does not have the same true life and light of the Holy Spirit in itself. Now I want to end this testimony of how a life was about to be lost. Hope you who have heard or read it see. God does not allow himself to be mocked. There is always a harvest of the life you live. A fruit of what you sow. There are no copyrights on it. Use it. Share it so others can open their eyes to their own lives and what their outcome of their lives will be. It has been translated and read digitally in English.